Welcome back to the channel. And Todd Howard has a has an interview here with Wired talking about his game. I this popped up on my feed, and I'm like, there's no fucking way. They got they got God Howard out here doing wired interviews, bro. That is crazy. So uh we got to watch this and so make sure to like button subscribe. Because uh what does Todd Howard have to say about his lineup of games? How many of these have I actually played? Four, five, six, seven. I played seven of the games he has on the table. Because he has 10 games right there. I played seven. I mean, I guess I played eight because I played Fallout. Howard here at Bethesda Game Studios. You might know me from games like Skyrim, the Fallout series, and now Starfield. And I'm here to talk to Wired about some of the games that we've made. Why didn't he say Oblivion, bro? I know Skyrim was the game. Skyrim was their, their game. I wonder what he says about that. Because that was like the Bethesda defining moment. I think I was talking what to him in the comment section about that. know about this game. It's one of the first full 3D shooters. I didn't even, heard, I didn't even know Bethesda made today, a fucking Terminator mouse game. Mouse look controls and what? using WSAD. This is the first PC game to ever do it. I had just started Damn, at Bethesda. This is in the mid-90s. Team sizes were small. I'm talking like 10 people, 12 people, tops. Everybody had to do a lot of different things. So I did a bit of programming. I was producing. I did level design. I became the sound effects guy. Nigga, I was What's like fun a, with this is a multi-celled organism at the time. Came with the game, and uh, <laughs> there's a sketch in the back. There's a lot of cool Man, artwork here, and far. one of our concept artists did a sketch of the core team here, positioned as if this we were team? the uh, resistance in the Terminator world. And there's me in the back, and I remember David Plunkett here, the artist who drew it, just said, "Todd, I gave you the biggest gun." <laughs> Ty looked like a child, Whenever bro. you're on a team, even if it's four people or 400 people, learning how to use everybody's skills and work together is, you know, what gets you the best game. So, you know, a couple of these games, starting with Terminator, is the beginnings for me at Bethesda. And there's a couple of different phases and chapters in terms of the games we made, the platforms that we're on, and how everybody worked together. After that has to be the the second Elder Scrolls, Daggerfall. You know, I, you know, I played this. Daggerfall Not a lot is of a it. game where so it's, much it's of a it PC is a game. It's so procedural weird. Procedural world where we're relying on the computer to generate all of the content and put the individual things that we had built kind of in smart places around the world. Think about 3D today. Wait, Daggerfall was being done by was... GPUs. Here, it's all done in the CPU. How we built the world is we have a height map where you get a bunch of vertices at a you know, certain period and then you're building a height map for the landscape and then instancing, building 3D objects that get replicated over and over on that height map. And believe it or not, it's how we build games today. It also... So Daggerfall was completely procedurally generated. What? Daggerfall seems so, what do you call it? So curated. It was all procedure generation the whole time. Bethesda's never not procedurally generated a, their game. That is what he's tell, bro, Todd, nigga. So pushes for us as we do role-playing games, what kind of character that you're gonna create. So Daggerfall's character system really is this jump up in terms of defining yourself. What are the advantages of your character? What are the disadvantages of your character? And brings in for the first time the Elder Scrolls skill system that so many people uh, know now from games like Skyrim. And this game had a lot of success, really brought Skyrim. the Elder Scrolls to Changed a new everything. audience. Why did they get so big? Redguard is the first game that I was the main project leader on. Didn't do that well. It's the Damn. last kind of DOS-based PC game. I've never heard of Redfall. Maybe because it, be because it didn't do so well. DOS games. It's right when 3D acceleration starts coming out. Really didn't hit a technology window or, or a gameplay style. I mean, it's listed as an adventure game, but it's a true genre mashup. It has some adventure game elements. It has action game elements. It has some role-playing elements. I guess you could say at that time, we started making a lot of games. 
instead of focusing, and none of them turned out really, really great. And the company was in a really difficult position financially, and I did feel responsible, and I kind of stepped back from it and said, it's a really good game. Where did it not resonate? What's the takeaway? And it was just too conservative. We made a very, very small game. I think it's well-crafted, but we weren't as ambitious as we could have been, and not what our audience we'd had at the time from Daggerfall and Arena really wanted from us when it came to the Elder Scrolls. High key, no lie, what he just said about Redguard is what half the population says about Starfield, bro. There is, there's no way that, come on now, bro. There's no way. There's, there's no fucking way. Your first game as the leader internally, because I mean, they didn't have that many fans back in the day and it did spin them into financial turmoil. He said that, but like, nigga, nigga. <laughs> People people have that complaint about Starfield. It's unfocused for a lot of people. It it that's wild that he said those things when like most of the great criticism of Starfield, that's exactly what they say. Like, damn Todd, bro. This it's a cycle, isn't it? It's a cycle, because it had two hits and then a burner. Hold on, let's keep going. The company's struggling. We probably have one more shot if we're gonna stay. And this is where this is where so companies do their in. best work. When they're failing, they do their best fucking work and it's fucking Morrowind. <laughs> it's fucking Morrowind, bro. The company was kind seller. of sold to Zenimax Media, a new company, and reformed around that. The decision came down, we're gonna have one team, it's gonna be under Todd, and we're gonna do Morrowind. We aimed very high. We were very, very ambitious and to bring did back a fucking the Elder work Scrolls of a job. with a core team that we had had. But taking the learnings from a game like Redguard, where we are hand building a world, but now we're doing it on a larger scale compared to the games people know today. It's actually still very, very small, but it's very, very detailed. And the other big thing that comes with Morrowind, we finally took it to console. So if we go back to the year 2000, Microsoft is thinking about creating the Xbox. And technically, it was great for us, right? It's a very PC styled console. It was made by drive, Nvidia. So many it was an amazing console. That we would be looking for in a console. And the big question was how do we, you know, translate the controls and all of those things? Fortunately, uh, we are all here today uh, because this game was a huge success. It I was fucking stunned. was. Obviously, it did well on the PC, but on Xbox at the time, it became the second best selling game behind Halo. <laughs> so just think just think todd howard and the team got a breakout hit from almost closure on xbox second best selling game behind halo halo was selling like 25 30 million copies bro like it was selling it was selling bigger than movies at the time halo was a massive ass hit and this thing morrowind was right up in the in the fucking breath as Halo after coming off of fucking Red Guard, which I didn't fucking hear of. It's crazy to hear, bro. It's crazy to hear. All these are Xbox games. <laughs> of course they are. He works with fucking Xbox now. Of course he's gonna have Xbox cases in there. Except the PC ones because those are only PC games. All right, let's keep going. It's Oblivion Time, my favorite Elder Scrolls game. Let's fucking go. Published by 2K. Instead of coming out with a quick sequel to Morrowind, why don't we take four years and really go ambitious again for the next console with hardware that doesn't exist. Team size now is getting up to around 60, 70 people. 70 and this is a game where the core group from- See, I was like, who was I in a comment stream with? We were talking about all kind of shit in the comment stream. It was a great time. I was in the comments talking to him. We got like fucking 20 fucking comments in the comment stream. I haven't even checked it. I wonder if he commented back. I don't know. But like, I was telling him that 
Bethesda became somebody with Skyrim. He didn't understand what I meant when I said that. I'm like, Bethesda was nobody before Skyrim. And he just said, Oblivion had 70 people on the fucking team. Like, people talk about Bethesda being this big juggernaut in gaming. Like, they were big the whole time. Like, no. Bethesda got big with Skyrim. They got AAA status from Skyrim, bro. And that's when they became the face of RPGs for gaming. A lot of people don't understand that. They just think Bethesda was big bad Bethesda the whole fucking time. Like, no. They were nobody, really. Until Skyrim came out. Then they became everything. And then people point at them as the reason AAA gaming space is bad. Come on now, bro. Y'all don't know gaming if y'all think like that. But let's keep going, Todd. When Morrowind was still here, we could build on that and be ambitious. We changed the technology hugely again, getting into pixel shaders, having to guess on hardware. So whenever you're doing technology in your own side of masses of amounts of content and art and design, and then you have a moving hardware target, it's the most difficult game development or any type of exercise that you could do as it comes to tech. There was a moment we were making the game with Xbox where that console didn't have as much memory as we wanted. And when they finally called us and told us that they were doubling the memory on the console they were shipping, we threw a party here. And I have never seen programmers look so happy in my entire life. This was a game that Fucking Xbox, bro. For many bro. reasons, it vaulted us to an audience we had never expected uh, to see on the PC and the Xbox comes out later on PlayStation. Yeah, because it was exclusive it to really Xbox for like six months. And other era of games for us, the 360 era. So legit, when he just said that Microsoft called them, was like, hey, bro, we're doubling the memory. Why the fuck did Microsoft just stop communicating with, with developers, bro? Why did they stop doing that? Because when they made the Xbox One, the Xbox One was severely lacking what the PlayStation 4 had. Even in the technology, it wasn't that big of a gap, but the gap was enough for developers to see. Microsoft, you could have gave us more. Why didn't you? The same thing could be said about the Series S. We know the Series S is good, but Microsoft could have gave them more. And they all, every, all, every developer is like, bro, this VRAM constraint is crazy, bro. You give us fucking 10 gigs of VRAM. Nigga, we're making massive games nowadays. Damn, this is a cycle, bro. This is a legit cycle that they're going through. Let's go to Fallout 3. Another mega hit. We were asked, what else does the team want to do? What do you want to do, Todd? It'd be good to have more than one franchise or one game every four to five years. At the top of our list was Fallout. It was a series that we had loved that had come out a while ago, and we were able to get the license. This game comes out, I believe, about two and a half years only after Oblivion. It uses a very similar technology base that we had built. It's our second game on the Xbox 360. One of the things that happens with games is knowing your tools, knowing the level of technology, and getting your whole team used to working with that pays big dividends. It is also really special because we're picking up a franchise that we hadn't worked in before. It's very new for us. It's very exciting. But how is it going to resonate when we translate basically somebody else's work the way we would do it or the style of game that we enjoyed best? And this game was even more popular than Oblivion. Some of that audience came with us and it also found an all new audience because yes, there's post-apocalyptic things in you know movies and literature and games, obviously, but really there's nothing like Fallout. Fallout it's was the world beautiful, before bro. the bombs fall. This world where the view of the nuclear future is this utopia that then gets destroyed. And it also has my favorite beginning of a game. This idea this that straight you out the womb. The vault, you had spent your whole life there. That How shit do you was make amazing, the bro. Feel that way. So us jumping through this montage of these periods of your life. I think it's on your first birthday in the game. When you're a baby and you're able to walk around, you press the button and the baby says, Dada. Dada. That's actually my son on his first birthday that I recorded uh, saying <laughs> that back to me. So Damn, that's game. fire, bro. And that sits right with Oblivion. And then comes their stardom. Fucking Skyrim. Well, RPG I think the one masterpiece, best known nigga. For is Skyrim. That's now when the they team became grown. Bethesda. Now we're about a hundred people. And you're looking at a team that grew from Morrowind to Oblivion to Fallout 3 and then to Skyrim. We were really firing on all cylinders. They only had a hundred people Skyrim, making Skyrim, and bro. It shows. 
we also started pushing the modding community. Modding is when you modify a game. You take it, you change something. People want to create their own adventures or artwork or anything. Our games allow it. We're huge fans of it. It's kind of how I started back on the Apple II, changing other games. It's still a complicated role-playing game, but the number of people who had never played a game like ours, or some people, not even any video game, they came to Skyrim. That's exactly, that's exactly so that what they captured with Skyrim, bro. Because these, these two games, the two Elder Scrolls games before was so like niche in the genre that like nobody was trying to play it. Because Oblivion and Morrowind are complicated as RPGs to play. There's not much to, to, to capture you unless you enjoy the, the actual thought of being in a universe and learning everything about it because Marwin legit like i was saying the npcs literally tell you go down the street take a left and go up the stairs and you'll find their house there's no quest markers there's no nothing you just have to remember what the fuck the npc told you and follow those directions to get to where you're going so when they finally got the the quest marker thing mostly right with fallout fallout 3 the quest markers would be like generally in the right place, but sometimes you still would be led astray. But then Skyrim got them bitches right. Everybody could play Skyrim, bro. And that's exactly what they captured. That's why Skyrim lasts fucking 10 years because they captured the fuck out of everybody. I mean, I guess it's 13 years now, but everybody got captured by Skyrim. With 100 people on the team, I thought they were at least like 200, 300 people by skyrim size but they're only a hundred that mean they still were small bro they still were a small fucking studio <laughs> that's that's crazy to hear right there is kind of that 360 era for us with our role-playing games where they find an audience that we never ever expected to find a level of popularity and us here learning how to make these games the team's about 110 or so after skyrim and we set our sights on the next Fallout. I didn't like Fallout 4. It was too, like they made it too easy. Skyrim is the first creation engine game where we had redone a lot of the technology that then feeds into Fallout 4. And the they made Fallout system, too easy. How we're handling all of the NPCs and the AI, the era of Xbox One, right? Where the technology level jumps up again and we had a very, very dynamic world with this game. If you look back in Morrowind, we have NPCs that feel believable for that era, but they're pretty much standing around. They're signposts. As we go into Oblivion, we push that. The NPCs could wander around. They had day-night schedules. They went to bed. You could poison them by stealing all the food and then just putting poison apples around. They would decide to eat that. Fallout 4, it does feel like a good action game in your hands, but it has those RPG systems. Everything can be used for crafting or used in some respect. So everything you pick up has these base components, build your own settlements, modify your guns, modify your power armor. Minute to minute, I think Fallout 4 is a huge success for us for just how a game feels in your hands. So we have Fallout 4 and then really an offshoot of Fallout 4 that is multiplayer. And I don't know what the fuck happened with Fallout 76, nigga. I wasn't there originally. Do. Everyone asks us to do multiplayer. We usually decide, obviously, not to. With Fallout 4, we had gotten inspired by these online survival games a lot of us were playing. We said, well, if we ever did multiplayer for Fallout, that's how we would do it. You know, borrows a lot of systems from Fallout 4. It's the first game, really, where we do that, where you can see things from the previous game almost directly in it. You know, it's a brand new type of game, and... I think as people know, we struggled. Despite its <laughs> issues, we had a lot of successes. We built our own online platform from scratch. Sold really well. We had a core audience playing the game despite they sold... its problems who were telling... Hold on, nigga. So... They... <laughs> Fuck. Damn, they just hurt me. So Fallout 76, one of the worst games Bethesda ever created. Sold well, bro. Fuck. <laughs> They sold the fuck out this game, bro. And it, it was horrible. Damn, that's the gaming industry for you. Us. We love this. Please fix it. We join with our community in having that communication about what would make the game better, how do we go about it, and us here learning 
how to get in a cadence and continue to update a game, put our heads down, do the hard work. And today, five years later, it is one of our most played games. Now a very big success for us, both in terms of what it's doing for players, but also it made us much, much better developers going through you know, a difficult process. And now to the star field. Into the star this field. This is an all new experience. The most ambitious game that we've made and the scale of it dwarfs everything that we had done so far. For a long time, we wanted to do a space game, something that, that I've wanted to do for a long time and something new outside of Fallout and Elder Scrolls, an IP that hasn't existed. So we did our first new IP in almost 30 years. We started development right after Fallout 4. We knew we were gonna redo the bulk of our technology. It borrows so much of what we've done in previous games from the procedural generation in games like Daggerfall. We redid the, the base engine. That's the whole game loop. When people talk engine, they're talking about what is the inner core loop of the game and how all parts talk, not just the renderer. Most people see engine, they think graphics renderer. That's just one part. So we redid the graphics renderer. We had a whole bunch of new AI, new animation system. We have a different system just for crowds, new system for visual effects. And so much of it was new. This project obviously took us a while and a number of things also happened during this time. We're jumping up in hardware into the Series X and S on, on Xbox. The pandemic happens, obviously affected everybody in the world. <clears throat> and we became fully part of Xbox as, as part of them now with this game. You know, each of them on their own created a challenge. All of those things together uh, made this one a challenge, but one that was really, really thrilling for all of us here. And if you see the original pitch of Starfield, go back 10 years ago, the tone, the way the game feels really, really sticks to it. Mm, look what I made here. <laughs> That's where everybody be like, <laughs> it's outdated. They literally created the bitch 10 years ago. The, and they created that motherfucking 10 year old game. Now, I like Starfield. I like Starfield a lot. I think it feels exactly like what I expect from Bethesda them. But a lot of people see like present day games, games that were concepts three years ago that be released now versus a game that concept was created 10 years ago that released now. That's why a lot of games that are going through development hell. Because 10 years ago, I mean, we got Skyrim, we got two Fallout games, we got plenty of other games out of them, and they were still making Starfield in the background. Like, you know, go write a couple codes for Starfield while they're creating some other games. But like, there's games that like Skull and Bones, you know, I've, I've been, I was legit testing that game for like three years straight. And it keeps getting canceled, keeps getting delayed. And I'm like, this game is horrible, bro. Like, it's not good. Like, <laughs> if I was on that 10-year cycle with Starfield, like, if I got to play that motherfucker for, like, three years straight, I would probably understand where a lot of people is like, oh, it feels so outdated. But, I mean, after I played Skyrim... I didn't really play Fallout 4. I played every other fucking game around these games. I didn't play another Bethesda game until Starfield, really. So, I mean, from going from Skyrim to Starfield, it felt like a good fucking game. A lot of people came from, like, Fallout 76 to Starfield. I could kind of see where they, where, they get their, where they get their gripes from. After Redguard, the company changes, and now we're part of Zenimax. We almost had to like reset ourselves and who we were coming into Morrowind. And then we build off that. These share a very similar technology base in the same way these share a technology base. And now this does. If we meet again, there'll be an Elder Scrolls Six here. And you're talking to me, but there's 450 people here. And we still have now people that work on Now there's 450 of them. So it went from 100 people created Bethesda's biggest fucking game of all time. They're like, they're never going to be bigger than Skyrim. They're never going to be that again. Skyrim is their, is their crowning achievement. Is their moment in the spotlight. That's Skyrim. A hundred people. They're 400 people deep. What the fuck? They're doing updates for these games. We have about 250 on Starfield. These only exist because of all of those people and us working together. That's why the games are so big. That's why there's so many 
moving parts and so many interesting things that people will find is that comes from everybody here and all of them putting something special of themselves into it. You know, seeing it visually, even though they're obviously digital, the boxes make it tangible. These are these things, they have kind of their own personalities. And I'm going back and picturing the faces hey, look, of the people here that, that I've made them with. And there have been so many people that have been on the journey with us here and can't wait to continue it together. He said fucking Elder Scrolls 6 is going to be right there next to it. Damn, Todd. Fuck. I mean, that was that was good. That was good information. Uh, that was that was very informative from the journey of Bethesda Game Studios and how they came to what they have right now, which is Starfield. Damn, to think a hundred motherfuckers made Skyrim, bro, and people thought Bethesda was big. Oh my gosh, that's crazy to hear. I thought they were at least bigger than that. I thought they would have had like two, three hundred people, but a hundred. A hundred dedicated niggas made Skyrim, bro. Their biggest crowning achievement. That is that is monumentous right there, bro. But baby Bethesda made Skyrim and became massive. And then the the three games after that are so kind of skewed in people's eyes in different ways. I mean, I guess people liked Fallout 4. I don't think people I I know a lot of people like Fallout 4. I didn't like Fallout 4 personally. But a lot of people did like Fallout 4. I was an Outer Worlds guy. <laughs> Obsidian. Obsidian came in. Outer Worlds. You you wanna be <laughs> Outer Worlds was a fucking hit. Outer Worlds 2, oh my god. How is Outer Worlds 2 gonna impact everybody's view on fucking Starfield? It is gonna happen. We know it's gonna happen. But make sure that like button, subscribe. I enjoy doing videos like this. You want more videos like this? Let me know down below. And uh, I want Bioware to do this shit. We don't know who's leading Bioware right now. It's kind of Mike Gamble and uh, what's his name. But uh, I'll see y'all in the next video.